First, I'd like to thank Orion Black Swan for publishing the third edition of my very first book. Especially, I'd like to thank Dino Luthria for her excellent shepherding of the publication process, her very careful attention to the many uh, details that were involved in bringing the book out. Second, I'd like to thank those who helped so much with the original research, scholars who helped locate and translate archival and other materials, for example, in the Andhra Pradesh archives, Pasha and Zio de Namah uh, I'd like to thank Mujahid Al Ansari, he's now in Karachi, I think, and Hermos House, and of course, Ami Chand for photographs. Most of all, the Kayas themselves, who spent so much time helping me. Uh, Audish Rani's father, Roy Mehbub Narayan, many, many, many uh, times. I remember, I think I made him take me to the Medina Hotel for Biryani once. Luckily, his wife did not, you know, there were no women there. Anyway, it, it was fun. Uh, so Roy Mehbub Dr. Bridge Mohan Lal, Astana, Red Hills. They and many, many others helped me trace families and uncover family and state histories. Third, I want to pay tribute to the former Hyderabad state, a cosmopolitan state. It's administrative and cultural. I call it Mughalai or Indo-Muslim. Uh, the the uh, administrative and court culture inherited from, related to that of the Mughals, and before that, Persia and Central Asia. The Kais were primarily in government service and shared in that higher cosmopolitan culture. The main culture, not bound to local or community habits or prejudice. They were at home in that larger world. Hyderabad was not an Islamic state, it stressed a civilizational and not a religious culture society, a truly cosmopolitan society. By the end of the 19th century, some Kayas began learning English and moving into the Diwani administration, modeled on British India and importing non mughi officials. But then came 1948 and 1956, when Hyderabad was merged into independent India and then trifurcated when the linguistic states were developed. I first came to Hyderabad in 1962, I think, and then did research in the mid-60s when the old Hyderabad state and its more and its culture were still well remembered. Of course, First Hindi in 48, and then Telugu became the official state languages, Telugu in 1956. The Kayas did not really learn Telugu, uh, Andhra Pradesh's official state language, and as you'll see in the epilogue to this new edition, not learning Telugu and learning English meant an introduction to another cosmopolitan and now global world. But for the Kayas, it meant shifting away from government service. They became doctors, computer people, a whole uh, lot of new occupations. So okay, they moved from one cosmopolitan culture to another. But, how can I put it? That global cosmopolitan world is in danger everywhere. And the lure of national religious identities religious prejudices in my country, and certainly also here, narrows the horizons. Yet I was so proud of Hyderabad, reading in the New York Times about the January 4th protest here, the protest against the CAA, against discrimination on the basis of religion. Friends here also wrote me about the peaceful nature of the very large protest the Hyderabadi humor on the signs, the courtesy shown to old people and women, the giving of sweets to the police, and on the whole, a very successful, peaceful protest. I hope that the Kayas and other Hyderabadis can resist the retreat 
to a religious identity and can remain cosmopolitan. Thank you. I came uh, this morning to Hyderabad in relation to a similar research which we are doing on diasporas across India. So two specific questions I have to uh, address to Karen. One, I think the lights would have came from North India primarily to begin with Mathos followed by Saxenas and Oshanas uh, to uh, in, in that order. Have you been able to also study the migration of the earlier trend of Kaistas who came and almost got implemented in Andhra? For example, uh, Two years back, a film was made on Gautam Satkarni. And uh, this was a film which they are trying to build up uh, to uh, pick it right on the uh, Telugu nationalism. And they have picked up a character called Gautam Satkarni, who was said to be a Thai star of that time, who migrated from Magadhan Empire. And uh, they are called Karn Thai star. And over a period of time, they further spilled over to Karnataka. And today, if you ask uh, current Kaisa, they will tell you that we all come from Karnataka. But they have forgotten their onward migration to Karnataka through Andhra Pradesh. So the question is that in addition to the uh, migrant Kaisas coming from North India, have we been able to also uh, Trace the migration of the earlier Kaista who came here and almost got into the movement, who became big kings, etc. over a period of time. So, no, I have not worked on that community of India that I have not worked on. So I learned something from you. <laughs> I emailed you with my full proposal. Yes, um, I uh, am from New Jersey. I'm here to research my community. And my community is uh, the Khatris of Hyderabad, um, Thamba Shatriyas. Uh, um, and uh, I'm very excited to say that some of the, the phraseology um, that I have applied to, to understand my own community, uh, their cultural syncretism, um, um, also being part of um, um, of the Nizam's move from the north to the south um, has similar um, um, aspects uh, like the Thais. And uh, it's ex very exciting research. And I wanted to point out that uh, cultural syncretism of the Brahma Kshatriyas um, being part of the, um, the bureaucracy of the Nizam's um, and, and, and their, their nature of, you know, you, you was the word cosmopolitanism. I say cultural syncretism. And uh, post uh, um, postmodern world is probably a third culture. Uh, th that's the phrase that postmodern um, cultural sociology applies to understand cosmopolitanism, cultural syncretism. So this is very exciting research, and, and uh, I'm um, glad to meet you. I'll, I'll catch up with you again. Sorry to read it. Uh, my question is, with a little bit of background, 1948 pol police action happened, integration of the Hyderabad state into the Union. A lot of Kayists, Muslims, or even like, you know, the different communities that comprise the Hyderabad state, they said like, the Kayists, they went from wearing the Rumi Topi to the Gandhi, the Gandhi Topi in 48, which was a part of their transition. So could you just describe like what that process was like? It, it, maybe it's already a part of your book, so. 
Just if you could just give a little historical context on that.